Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gym TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi folks, we're glad to be back and here's our news for today with me, Vanessa. Indonesia and Australia agreed to continue defense and security relations. Indonesia and Australia renew a defense pact and agreed to boost training ties among a series of joint security agreements at a meeting in Jakarta of defense and foreign ministers of both countries. Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi says memoranda of understanding are signed in counterterrorism, defense and cybersecurity. During the visit of Minister Payne and Minister Dutton, Three other MOUs were also signed, namely MOU on countering terrorism and violent extremism, MOU on cyber cooperation and emerging cyber technology, and arrangement on defense cooperation that just signed by the two defense ministers. We also World Defense Minister Prabowo Subianto says discussions are made about the possibility of Indonesian military cadets attending Australian academies in what will be a historic first. Australia is represented by Foreign Minister Maurice Payne and Defense Minister Peter Dutong, who were making the first such ministerial visit to Indonesia since the start of the pandemic. Indonesia and Australia must focus on strengthening our partnership. Indonesia and Australia must become the anchors for cooperation in the Indo-Pacific region. And that's exactly what we have been doing during this two plus two ministers meeting. The foreign minister says other areas discussed include peace and security in the Indo-Pacific and political developments in Afghanistan as well as in Myanmar, for which both countries expressed support for the peace efforts of Southeast Asian Regional Envoy. China's Vice President attends opening ceremony of the 10th China and ASEAN Expo and calls to build a community with a shared future. Chinese Vice President Wang Qishang attends the opening ceremony of the 18th China ASEAN Expo and China Association of Southeast Asian Nations Business and Investment Summit in Nanning, capital of South China's Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region. At the event, he calls for using the platform to deepen pragmatic cooperation and advance the building of China ASEAN community with a shared future. Since the establishment of dialogue relations between China and ASEAN 30 years ago, the two sides have been promoting regional peace, stability, development, and prosperity, setting an example of cooperation in the Asia Pacific region. Wang says, the ASEAN enjoys a priority position with China's neighborhood diplomacy and is a key area in jointly building the Belt and Road with high quality and commit to promoting better development of bilateral ties in the next 30 years. He adds, China is willing to work with ASEAN to align the Belt and Road Initiative with ASEAN countries' development strategies to jointly foster strategic partnership of higher level, expand economic and trade cooperation and promote regional connectivity and economic integration to improve the well-being of the people. Wang also expressed China's willingness to deepen anti-pandemic cooperation and strengthen cooperation in such areas as digital economy and sustainable development so as to promote economic recovery in the region. The Vice President says China is committed to mutual opening up that features shared benefits, shared responsibilities and shared governance, which will forge a wider market and bring more opportunities to all countries. Manila citizens storm because of Duterte's nomination of the Philippines as vice president for next election. Manila residents are torn over Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte accepting his party nomination to run for vice president in the next year's election. If you ask me, I'm not for it. In terms of position, you're already the highest like a king. Then you will go lower, it doesn't look good. People will think it's greediness. Only greed will make a president want to go down to a vice president. He shouldn't run anymore. Those surrounding him are corrupt. We won't be able to get rid of corruption. Hindi mawawala yung corruption natin. 
the Mercurial Leader 76, is barred by the Constitution from seeking a second term, and his interest in the largely ceremonial post has been dismissed by opponents as a bid to stay in office to avoid potential legal action at home or abroad. Duterte, who has always portrayed himself as a reluctant leader, his decision was driven by love of country. He shouldn't be able to finish his plans. He still has a lot of unfinished projects. If he isn't put back into the office, the projects will be cut. If he can still run, he should run. The country's presidential and vice presidential elections are said to be held on May 9, 2022. Much damage occurs in the northern Philippine islands caused by Super Typhoon Chantu. Typhoon Chantu lashes the Philippines' northernmost islands, cutting power and damaging houses in its wake. Footage taken by Dennis Ballestro of Aldes shows powerful winds and rains battering house in the town of Saptan, slowly easing as the typhoon moved further away. The National Disaster Agency in a bulletin says no casualties have been reported, while 11,145 people affected by the typhoon. Assessment for damages is ongoing. The State Weather Bureau, Pagasa, says Chantu with gust picking up to 280 km per hour is originally a Category 5 typhoon when it struck the northern islands of Batanes. Meanwhile, according to the bulletin, the tropical storm risk that it has been downgraded to a Category 3 typhoon and as it moves closer to Taiwan. The footage has been verified through correspondent cross-checking and the weather bulletin and additional information provided from the source. Vietnamese authorities rescue fishermen and residents after tropical storm hits. Footage from the state broadcaster VTV shows Vietnam Coast Guard rescues five fishermen from a sinking boat and soldiers help another five who are stranded by float water after tropical storm Konson hit. Footage also shows vehicles and people moving through float streets in the central city of Da Nang. Vietnamese authorities warns of the risk of floats and landslides triggered by Konson even after the low-pressure system weakened of the country's central coast at the weekend. The country's disaster management agency says heavy rain bring by the storm killed one person, damaged 31 houses and flooded more than 1,000 hectares of rice fields in central Vietnam. Last week, the authorities put 500,000 soldiers on standby, readied evacuation plans and ordered vessels to stay in port as the country braced for the arrival of Konson. Vietnam is prone to destructive storms and flooding due to its long coastline. Natural disasters, predominantly floods and landslides triggered by storms, killed 379 people and injured 1,016 others in the country last year. Bali tourism industry optimistic caution after COVID-19 restrictions relax. Locals in Bali are cautiously optimistic about an uptick in the business in the coming months after senior government ministers announced a day earlier that COVID-19 social restrictions on the island will be downgraded to allow for some tourist destinations to be opened. The country's once thriving holiday hotspot has been uncharacteristically quiet after Indonesia was struck by one of the worst outbreaks of COVID-19 in Asia, but cases have declined significantly in the past month. Our hope is the virus spread can be kept under control so that we can reach an 80 till 90 percent vaccination rate and then we can start to open for international tourists as they will have the confidence to come to Bali. Across the region, Malaysia and Vietnam are also looking at opening travel bubbles in tourist heavens including on the islands of Langkawi and Pukwok. Four Afghans arrive in Japan after fleeing from Afghanistan. Four Afghans arrived at Narita Airport in Japan after the Taliban seized Afghanistan capital last month. According to the public broadcaster NHK, the four are among 10 who fled to Pakistan by land last week. 
they were on the list of people that the Japanese government wanted to evacuate as some of their family members had worked for Japan's agencies in Afghanistan. The remaining six are expected to arrive later. Yesterday, a total of four people, including local staff of the JICA Afghanistan office and their family, entered Japan. With regards to these people who entered Japan, they left by land to a neighboring country after the situation worsened in Afghanistan. Because they wished to enter Japan, we assisted them by issuing visas and arranging air tickets, and they arrived yesterday via a commercial aircraft. Japan, in late August, sent four planes to evacuate Japanese nationals and 500 local Afghans who worked at the Japanese embassy and local office of a Japan aid agency. However, only one Japanese national was rescued and the rescue operations was terminated after the United States military left Kabul airport. Mainland Chinese report 59 new cases locally transmitted COVID-19 all in Fujian. The National Health Commission says the Chinese mainland reports 59 new locally transmitted COVID-19 cases, all from East China's Fujian province. The commission says among the 59 cases, 32 are reported in Fujian's Xiamen city, 24 in Putian city, and 3 in Guangzhou city. No new suspected cases or new deaths related to COVID-19 are reported. The official data shows 12 of them are recategorized as confirmed cases from previously asymptomatic infections. The eastern Chinese coastal province is undergoing a new round of COVID-19 clusters since Putian city recorded one local COVID-19 infection. A total of 8,678 imported cases had been reported on the mainland in this week. Among them, 8,072 had been discharged from hospitals following recovery and 606 remained hospitalized, including four in severe conditions. The total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases on the mainland reached 95,340, including 810 patients still receiving medical treatment. A total of 89,894 patients had been discharged from hospitals after recovery and 4,636 people had died of the coronavirus. The director of Putin's Health Commission says the city authorities had set up 430 testing points in Xianyu County with over 2,700 medical workers and nearly 10,000 community workers and volunteers assisting with the mission at the site. East China City prepares for huge winds and rains brought by Typhoon Chantu. Shanghai and parts of Zhejiang and Jiangsu provinces in East China implemented emergency response procedure to prepare for a whole gale and heavy downpour brought by the landfall of Typhoon Chantu. In Zhejiang's Zhousan, as many as 2,360 fishing boats returned to shore before 10 o'clock. A total of 90 ferry routes are suspended due to high winds and heavy downpour. In the nearby Ningbo city, road maintenance workers are busy removing mud from landslide sites and using hoses to drain away float water. Meanwhile, Shanghai issues an orange alert for Typhoon Chantu, the second highest alert in China's four color coded system. Community workers across the city began evacuating residents in low lying area and construction workers living in temporary accommodations. More than 300,000 people have been relocated to safe places. All classes in kindergartens, elementary and middle schools have been suspended for a day and a half starting noon time, while all outdoor tourist attractions and parks have been closed. Flights at the Shanghai's Pudong International Airport and Huangqiao International Airport are cancelled and parts of the five rail services are suspended. In the coastal city of Kidong and Jiangsu province, more than 700 vessels return to port. Local authorities have stepped up patrol and monitoring efforts at beach and bank in response to emergency situation. Thank you for watching. Remember to continue maintaining the health protocols, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a nice weekend.